Three monitors, three different use cases, one big problem. Which one do I use? I could use the Alienware AW2721D for its 240 hertz refresh rate, or the Apple Studio display for its 5K Retina display, or the Alienware AW3423DWF for its QD OLED display. But I don't wanna to have to choose. I want all these monitors in one, just one monitor that does all these things at a reasonable price. Is that too much to ask? Am I looking for a unicorn? Sadly, that might be the case. What is this? The Alienware AW3225QF 4K 240Hz 3rd generation QD OLED for $1200? Could this be the unicorn I've been searching all of three years for? I don't know, maybe. Let's check it out. This video is not sponsored and all products were purchased by me. This video is completely funded by me. So if you will like the video and want to show your support, leave a like and hit that subscribe. Specs wise, the AW3225QF is absolutely insane. 4K, that's 3840 by 2160, so it is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's a 32 inch monitor measuring 31.6 inches diagonally. And at that resolution and size, it's getting 140 pixels per inch, so text is nice and sharp. It's rated at an insane 0.03 milliseconds of response time, that's thanks to that QD OLED display and it runs at 240 hertz, which you can power via two HDMI 2.1 ports in the back or a DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC, which allows it to go up to that 4K 240 hertz. So any one of those ports will get you 4K 240 hertz. This monitor is G-Sync compatible. It is rated at HDR 1000, so it'll get up to 1000 nits of peak brightness in HDR. In SDR, it won't get quite that high. I was measuring about 277 nits in SDR. And best of all, it is rocking that third generation QD OLED, which in the third generation, they improved the resolution that they're able to pump out of it. They improved the text fringing, so it's not quite so fringing on text and it text is easier to read. And they also increased the durability of the panel itself, with burn-in being a concern on these OLEDs, durability is very important. And one of the best specs of this monitor is that Dell offers a three-year OLED burn-in warranty standard with this. So you don't have to worry about burn-in for that three-year period of time. If it happens, you can claim warranty and get a replacement. There is also two USB-A ports and a USB-A upstream where you can attach a cable to plug it into your computer. And on the bottom of the monitor, there is one USB-A port and one USB-C port, as well as the joystick. With the stand, you can height adjust, you can swivel, you can pivot. However, you can't rotate the monitor. So if you wanted to use this in portrait, you're gonna have to use a different stand or an arm. This is a curved panel. It has a 1700R curve. And on the back of the monitor, there is RGB lights, which you can customize inside the panel menu. I personally like this acid green kind of lighting here. Alienware claims that this monitor achieves 99% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. I wasn't quite achieving those numbers. In the standard profile at 50% brightness in SDR, I was achieving 100% of the sRGB color gamut, 95% of Adobe RGB, and 97 of P3. And the color accuracy I was getting in that profile had an average Delta E of 0.78. I then tested the creator profile, which is supposed to be the more color accurate profile on this monitor. And I got 100% sRGB, 88% of Adobe RGB, and 97% of P3, so a little bit less there. And for color accuracy, I got a Delta E of 1.12. So it was actually less accurate in creator mode than it was standard mode. Once I ran the screen through a calibrator in creator mode, I got 100% of sRGB, 87% of Adobe RGB, and 95% of P3, so it dropped even more in terms of gamma, but the color accuracy greatly improved, and I got an average Delta E of 0.68. Now let's check out some gaming. I'm gonna run through a couple games to get a feel for how the games look. I'm gonna run them at max graphics. For hardware, I'm using the 7800X3D and a desktop 3080 Ti. 
I'm gonna start off with Modern Warfare 3. I'm in a private match here, and for my graphics settings, it's all the way maxed with no DLSS. So I went for maximum graphics here. Right now in this little alleyway, I'm getting 85 frames per second, and I just kinda of wanna run through this map because it is absolutely beautiful. This, I think, gives a really good representation of the colors, all the different building colors, the sky. HDR is on, and it just looks beautiful. This is the full 4K resolution, and there's just so much detail and color on this map. And if we go up into this hallway, you can see that there's some neon signs and you can really see that HDR popping. That open sign is just, oh, looks so good. This little ice cream sign. Yeah, there's little lights in here. The lighting is really, really good on this map. Now let's jump into Alan Wake 2 and take a look here. Again, the graphics are absolutely maxed, except for ray tracing. When I turn ray tracing on, it absolutely nukes the frames per second. So we're just gonna stick with all max settings here besides ray tracing, no DLSS, so that we can at least play through the game. And I'm just gonna walk around here in this open environment. There's some tearing because we're only getting 31 frames per second, not that high. Definitely not 240 frames to take advantage of 240 hertz, but this is just a representation of how good the graphics look on this monitor. And they are absolutely stunning. The blacks are really dark, and this game really gives a good representation of the HDR capabilities of this monitor, like that difference between light and dark. Let's hop out here. Yeah, getting 33, 35 frames per second. So our frames per second are not that great on the 3080 Ti with max graphics on Alan Week 2, but it does look very beautiful. And this is just more to show how good this game looks on this monitor. The colors are so rich. I'm here in the town and yeah, everything just looks amazing. Let's go up to this truck. Yeah. Oh yeah, the colors are just absolutely insane on this monitor. And it's 4K, it, everything is just super clear, super sharp. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Since the Alienware has a 2.1 HDMI and so does the PS5, let's go ahead and do some PS5 gaming. I'm gonna hop into Gran Turismo 7 and try that out. Ooh, the first thing I notice is the gauge cluster looks so good. Oh, I wasn't even hitting the accelerator, whoops. I was too focused on the gauge cluster and the tail lights on those cars do look amazing. Yeah, this is the way to play this game on the Alienware AW3225QF with the PS5. This just looks stunning. Those cars are so clear. I can read all the text. Oh, going into that tunnel. Even the mirror, the headlights look amazing. Oh yeah, this is sick. I'm gonna be playing a lot of this game on this monitor. There is no sound though, which is a little odd. So I would need to plug in headphones for this since this monitor does not have speakers. How is this monitor suited for productivity and can you connect it to a Mac? Well, it just so happens that I have both open here. Here I am with my timeline open for this very video in Final Cut Pro and everything is super clear. The colors are excellent and they're accurate because this is a very, very color accurate display. The timeline scrolling along the bottom there kind of like wrapping around with that curved display. 
is kind of distracting to be honest, but it takes some, it takes some time to get used to, but I think I am starting to get used to it, but it has like this carousel effect. It's a little disorienting when you're scrolling around quickly. Can you code on this monitor? Well, yeah, I have my settings here set to font 16. It's a little bit bigger, but over here on the file nav, these are normal fonts and they're perfectly readable. I'm about two feet away, perfectly readable. Uh, text is very clear. I cannot notice any fringing. The white font looks white. So yeah, I would say that this monitor is pretty great for programming. I wanna turn attention over to macOS settings here. I have the display settings up. It defaults to 2560 by 1440, but I have it to 3008 by 1692. I find that better. And it's running at 120 hertz. Now I have an M1 Max and I have to plug it in via this USB-C port connected to the display port on the back of the monitor. This cable does not come with the monitor, so you'd have to purchase it separately. And since it's an M1 Max, the HDMI port is 2.0, so it can't do the 4K uh, 240 hertz res resolution and specs. I would suspect that the newer M series Max could the ones that have HDMI 2.1, but I don't know for sure if you have an M1 Max, you're gonna be stuck with this. It's still fine though, it's still 4K and 120 hertz, I mean, that's fine. So after all that, the specs, the gaming, the productivity, it's perfect, right? Not exactly. Hardware-wise, I do wish that this monitor included speakers. They don't have to be great, but at least just a little something would be nice. And also, I wish the stand that it came with would allow for rotation. I know a lot of people would want to use this in portrait mode. It's a great monitor for portrait mode if you wanted to do that. Personally, I would never do that, but I wish it had it at this price point. There's also some annoyances on the software side of things, like the menu system, for instance, has items in there that just don't contain any explanation. Like, what is console mode? What is tone mapping? What does that enable? when it's enabled. It's not very clear and it doesn't really seem to do anything. Also, you can't change the profile settings if you're in HDR. You have to disable HDR and go into SDR, then you're able to change the color profile and then change it back to HDR. This just seems like multiple avenues to take to get the same thing accomplished. Why can't you just switch it in HDR? Luckily, some of the software annoyances can be fixed via firmware, which hopefully Alienware stays on top of with this monitor. And also it seems like the NVIDIA drivers kind of play a role too. I'm using this one listed below here, and that one is the latest as of this video, and it seems to be working fine for the monitor for now. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this monitor. And let me know if you have any questions or want to see anything in particular with any future videos on this monitor. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. And I will see you in the next one.